Well, hello there. Um, I'm now going to try to demonstrate that little plotter called Silverreed EB50. I believe it was made in mid 80s sometime, 85 or 86. Um, If I can get logged in, yes, I can. I hope. Okay, so this is the Raspberry Pi. Up here, I'm running the Lean Apple Apple II E emulator, and this is a basic program. I partly wrote and partly stole from the Brian's theme demo program that comes with the DOS 33 System Master. Um, I stolen most of the line drawings and then adapted it to output plotter commands instead of. Um, let me see if I can scroll it by here. Like that, I will do. Um, list so you can post a video on it. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Focus, 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 focus. Where is my focus? Focus, there we go. List. Like that. And this can be paused later so you can type it over. Uh, it's not longer than that. And then, in this window down here, I will use this magic command that says it's the tail of the printer output file for the emulator, piped into T, so you can see what it's printing, and um, also then redirect it to dev USB LP2, which is my USB parallel port interface with this silvery cable here that goes up. To the machine in all its glory. This is the Silverine EB50, which is a small typewriter, really, uh, which is capable of making graphs, uh, bar graphs, and uh, circle graphs, percentage graphs in its own right. But what we are going to use is the parallel port, the Centronics port of it, that turns it into a small computer printer. It will print alphanumerics and in four sizes, uh, in uh, normal italic underline or italic underline style. It's uh, three sizes, sorry. And it will print portrait or landscape, since it's a plotter. And what you see here is the small revolver mechanism. Let me get some light for you. Uh, there is the revolver mechanism that will... Well, that sort of holds the pens. It will uh, change over for the next pen, like that. And there's an electromagnet that will push the pen onto the paper, pen down, pen up. And it will move in the X direction across the paper and it will scroll the paper back and forth, up and down, to, to actually um, draw the characters that you're typing. It has a small LCD display, like there, it just says printer on it now, because it's put in printer mode on that small lever there. And we'll see how this goes. So I'm starting this command, which should, yeah, connect the printer to the... to the Apple II emulator. And we'll run this basic program like that. It asks if you want a frame. Yes, please. We make a frame. And then we got some output. And in about 30 seconds, you will see when the file system is synced. That is, when it's actually written to the file, you will see it echo there. And the plotter will start moving. Okay, 
So, here we go. We're moving across the page. Please focus. There we go. It was supposed to print the red frame, but the red pen is dried out. So I'll just go ahead and push enter. And you see the numbers generating here on the Apple screen. And eventually they will start following into the file system and out the parallel port to make the thing start drawing. All right, so let's see if I can get a good angle here. I'll just climb on top of a chair, okay. So, basically we're hoping to see some action. So now we're drawing sort of the Brian's theme style lines here. and one wire and then a feed roll for the paper. As you can hear them use different speeds for different angles of line. And this will of course go on for a while. And uh, yeah, it's nice things. Got pretty nice resolution actually. There are 999 by 999 points resolution, which means it has a roughly a 0.01 inch uh, resolution. You could see a stair stepping effect somewhere if you look very closely. Anyway, it was a cheap plotter for home computers back in the day. It is actually using the same mechanism uh, but twice as wide as the Commodore 1520 plotter and also as the Atari 1020 plotter. It's the same mechanism or more or less the same mechanism at least. It's real hard to get hold of these pens. Uh, I've seen somewhere on the net that you can buy them new old stock from eBay sellers, but uh, then you're not guaranteed that they work. I'm going to abort this plot now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, now it's starting on the XY. Let's see what's happening here. Sorry, uh, I'm about to break out of this program. There, break. And we will also stop this and I'll just pull the plug on it like that. Because I want to show you what I did for a pen. One I could not get um, put it over to normal mode. And we'll um, reboot. I'm going to take the paper out for you to see. Let's feed up the paper, see what we've done so far. Alright. So this is pretty much the result that we got. And as you can see, it's... Uh, Rather fine lines with some stair stepping effect, and also especially if you have, if you are on a rather flat angle of the, of the line, there you can see the stair steps. So it's yeah, it's been drawing this 
Um, I have some examples here that I did earlier. We'll get to those later. Um, yeah, what I wanted to show you is what I did for a pen. So I'll just remove one of the pens like that and put up the light. It's hard to juggle everything. Just two hands. I should have prepared this, I suppose. Anyway, this is the small pen. Uh, for comparison, I'll bring out the. Well, this is the red pen that is a standard pen. What you can see here is it's got a plastic tip with a really tiny ball point on it. And inside is a small tube from the ball point into a sponge filled with water-based ink. And this sponge is of course long dried out and uh, but what you can do is you put a small pliers carefully on the plastic neck of this thing and you can pull it straight out and then you can just water the sponge and you will get some life out of the pens. The problem is uh, every time you do this you dilute the color so after a while you're basically writing with water. Uh, what I did is I got me a cheap ballpoint pen from the supermarket and I simply cut off the plastic tube on that pen to length like that and I slaughtered my green pen that came with the plotter because that was damaged in the ballpoint as well and so I like this you maybe you can see that no it's hard to say yeah there you can see I, I put standard household plastic tape uh, wrapped around this um, pen ink holder to make it fit precisely in the metal housing and then I pushed it in and that worked like a charm problem is and now when I put it out the tape stays in the in the metal case like that so I can just put it in and put it out and this will write well let's say you make a oh sorry dropped it again if you make a full page plot like this that's quite a lot of lines let's see if you can focus yeah here is quite a number of lines drawn and this basically emptied that small those that centimeter of uh, of ballpoint pen uh, and uh, but what I can do is I simply cut off a new bit of the full length pen like this I have a said it here so here's the rest of the pen and I can just chop off pieces until it's gone this was a used pen so it's been used a bit already but this part this bit of ink like that it's about one page so they don't last very long this it uses a lot of ink because it's so many lines especially when you do this I mean if I would for text it would be several pages the problem is with the modified ballpoint pen you do get quite a bit coarser lines I mean that's a 0.7 or something millimeter tip and I believe the standards are 0.1 or 0.3 millimeters thick I mean, the, the, you can see the difference actually. The ballpoint is quite a bit thicker than the standard pen. And also the ballpoint pen has a thicker ink. It's not so fluid, which means it will smear quite a bit. If you put many lines close to each other like this, you will get a saturated piece of paper. So it's glossy there, you can see. But anyway, uh, it's new life from the plotter anyway. You can use it, you can verify your programming and then maybe use your one lasting good pen to make the final design. Or something like that. Um, yeah. So that's about it. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you some other time. <laughs>